hello everybody today i've got a job interview now i'm pretty nervous right but before i came out here i decided to do my tefl uh, course it's a 120 hour course and um, it took me about four weeks to do and now i've done that without any teaching degree in cambodia i can teach english to, uh, to local people anyway i got I had an interview last week or two weeks ago in a place called kampong chenang it was beautiful there it's a lovely lovely place but it was so rural and there were no foreigners no one could speak english and it would have been a pretty isolating experience and also the money was pretty crap as well but today um this is a walk from where i live and anyway wish me luck i'm gonna go and take this interview and i'll let you know how it goes Okay, so while I'm being grilled in my interview, I'm gonna show you a little bit of Kampong Chenang. It's actually called a city, but you know, compared to what you would expect in the UK, um, I would call it more of a town really. It's a very rural place, but it's got a beautiful lake and it's got a couple of markets. I mean, it actually floods in the winter time in the rainy season, which is just coming to an end now. But it's got monuments and it's got a history and a culture and it's a um, very, very nice place to visit. <music> Okay, interview complete. Now, for those of you that are considering coming to Cambodia to, to work and live, um, it'd be worth you sticking to the end of this video because you might be able to um, pick up a few hints and tips. Um, I've been here for getting on for two months now and I've learned quite a lot really and um, I've also helped people. It's a fantastic place to be. And um, you know, if you're interested, um, subscribe to my channel. Okay, so the day before my visa ran out, um, I got a phone call from the school saying, can you come in tomorrow? the day that my visa ran out to have an interview. So I then had to make a decision. Um, I hadn't really tried to renew the visa, so it would have been a case of um, leaving the country and coming back again. So I ended up being an overstayer by one day. It's not great being an overstayer. You have to pay a $10 fine, but I'm not so much worried about that. It's more the, I don't want to be on the shit list really. Um, but I think one day's okay. There's a lot of reasons why you know, you could overstay by one day. You could be a victim of crime, you could be ill, etc., etc. So I think I managed to pull that one off. But listen to this. So I turned up for the interview, dressed in my glad rags, and it was all very formal. Um, I, I suppose education is pretty formal all around the world, really. But this was very formal, and because everybody spoke Khmer, it made it a bit more, you know, I was a bit disorientated. But I was sitting in the waiting room and um, with a load of other uh, Khmer people, I was the only foreigner there. All of a sudden this man walked in and if I'd been on my own, I would have gone, all right, mate. But everybody stood up and went, and so I did as well because it was the thing to do. And they call him His Excellency and um, I wasn't expecting that, but that was my introduction. Anyway, I went in to see him. We had a discussion about um, the work and um, he gave me some paperwork to do. I had to write a 200 word essay on the pros and cons of separating naughty children from the rest of the class. Um, that was quite easy to do, really. 200 words soon passes, especially when you're a, a verbal person like I am, let's say. And then I had to devise a lesson plan um, based on some handouts I was given. Um, anyway, that was quite easy as well. I've done my TEFL course, so I know how to do a lesson plan now. Um, I've got a lot to learn. There's a lot involved, and I'm just go I'm going in cold. I've got no experience. So as a result of that, my wages aren't going to be that high. But I expect that, and I'm going um, to do it the old-fashioned way. I'm going to do it the hard way. You go in low, you work as hard as you can, you master your craft, and then you ask for a bit more money. And um, that is a very durable thing here and it won't take long and um and it's such a wonderful place to, to be and such a cheap country to live in and such a warm and friendly place to be that um i'm happy with that i'm not worried about having a car that's better than my next door neighbor or you know i'm just all that shit i'm not interested in that anymore so um i've devised the lesson plan and i've written the uh, 200 word essay um it's been checked over and i've been called back in again to see his excellency 
Um, I went in and he asked me why I wanted to work for this school in particular, and I'd done a bit of research on it so I could kiss his ass a little bit. And you know, anyway, um, it was a pretty reasonable man, really. I didn't really, you know, have to really water myself down too much. I just tried to be a good version of myself. He's asked me a few questions. I've um, I've asked him a few questions, and um, he offered me the bloody job there and then, which was fantastic. Inside, I was um, I was. But on the outside, I was, um, yeah, thank you very much, sir. I, um, I, I really appreciate your time. Anyway, so I've gone outside and I've met this lady who's um, a manager, education manager, so she works for him. And we've had a bit of a chat and we've talked about the dress codes and where I should, um, you know, where I'm going to be working because they've got a lot of campuses, this school um, in Phnom Penh. And um, as it turns out, I'm going to be working one day, I'm going to be here, another day I'm going to be there, but it's not too bad. One of the days I'm actually very close to where I live. Um, and, you know, compromises need to be made. Um, the money's not bad, it's infinitely livable, you know, and I can still live a reasonable life. I haven't got, a, you know, a, um, you know, very cheap food and um, live in a hovel. I can, I can live my life quite comfortably. You know, and if I want to have a couple of beers on the weekend, which I'm sort of trying to avoid, really, um, I can. But I can have some luxuries in life, let's just say that. There's still a few um, T's to be crossed and a few I's to be dotted. I've got to... Um, uh, go to the school and buy my um, buy my clothes. I have to wear certain clothes on each day, and you know, it's, like I say, it's quite formal. But it's fine. I've got to have a medical as well. Um, I don't know how involved that's going to be, but um, I'm pretty fit and healthy, really. And um, and that's about it. Um, that I might have to do a background check, but you know, come hither, come tither, and uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I'm down due to start next Wednesday. There's a water festival just about to start here. Cambodians love a festival. They love a celebration. And um, I'll be going in to start um, work um, the day after that, which is next Wednesday. Okay, so tips and hints. If you're coming to Cambodia and you're looking for work, number one would be come to Phnom Penh. Um, there's, prop there's more beautiful places in Cambodia than Phnom Penh, but it's the city and there's schools everywhere. Um, when I first uh, set out, I printed my CV out 10 times and a copy of my TEFL certificate. And I went to 10 different schools and I literally just went in and said, hello, my name's Tony, I'm an English teacher from England and I'm looking for work. If you've got any vacancies, please get in contact with me. And I left my CV. Anyway, I did that 10 times um, in a tuk-tuk. It took me less than an hour to do. So there's literally, there's lots of schools here. So that would be a good tip. You can go to CM Reap if you want to. And you know, there's more beautiful places to say that to, to go, like I say, but you're probably going to earn a bit less and it's probably going to be a little bit harder to find work. But, okay, tip number two. Make sure you're nice and clean. Turn out well. Have a Chaz and Dave. Cut your hair, right? And don't smell of cigarettes. They mark you down for that. So don't, in fact, try not to smell of anything. Don't overdo it with the blue stratos because that will mark you down as well. Just, you know, a bit of deodorant and... Um, and, and you know, have a shower in the morning before you go out and just be presentable, make sure your clothes are nice and um, that's another good tip as well. Also, I haven't got a degree. Um, it, will, it will help you a lot if you've got a bachelor's degree, not even in English, you could have a bachelor's degree in anything and that will help you a lot, you know, that looks great on your CV. I haven't got anything like that, but I have got my TEFL and that's good enough in Cambodia. You can't do that in lots of countries but Cambodia, you can definitely do that. And Asia is a place where there's ways around things. So you can come here and you can switch countries if you decide you want to go to Vietnam, they might offer you a better package. Um, or Thailand, you might be able to do it. Laos, there's, um, there's other countries, Malaysia. Um, you can you know, maybe try to get to China or Japan, Korea, um, Indonesia. You know, this, um, this is a bloody great part of the world, let me tell you. But my reason for coming to Cambodia was very unrestricted. Um, you know, I, I've been here before and I know the people are really nice. If there's a friendlier race of people in the world, I haven't met them yet. But, um, and I know that it's, um, you know, it's quite easy to get a work permit. Um, you can get a long visa um, quite easily, which a long visa is good. If you get a visa that's more than six months, um, so you want a 12-month visa, really, especially once you get a job, right? you can come and go. Um, the one-month visa is single entry, so if you go away for the weekend, you've got to buy another visa. Um, also, when you get your work permit, they run from January to December. So 
I don't really want to be getting mine now in the middle of November because it's going to run out. I still paid the same amount of money, but it's going to run out at the end of next month and then I'm going to have to buy another one. So I'm going to have to sort of like try and try and wing that so I don't have to get it until January. Um, but that's my plan. It's all very easy to do. There's agencies out here, there's plenty of them. And obviously they charge you to do it, but you leave your passport with them, you say I want a 12 month visa and tell them what you want. And you go back a couple of days later and over the Nelson Eddies and you get your passport back all sorted. As from next Wednesday, which is a week today, I'll be teaching teenagers how to speak English and how to get them through their exams. I can't wait. I mean, it's going to be really fulfilling, isn't it? Just to see these kids blossom. And um, I'm really excited about that. And um, 2024 is the year when I put my heart and soul into learning how to speak Khmer and learning how to um, and learning how to be good at my job, as good as I can possibly be. That's my philosophy in life anyway. Whatever you're going to do, try and be as good at it as you possibly can. Um, you haven't got to be the best, just be as good as it, as you, as it, at it as you possibly can. And that will stand you in good stead as you go through life. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I, I hope you found this useful. And um, please subscribe and like, because I'd like to grow my channel a little bit if I can. Um, anyway, thank you very much. And um, I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.